Chicago, my message is stay close to the water. <laughs> Same Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, go ahead and turn in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. Psalm what? Psalm 1, 1 3, 1 through 3. And uh, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. Stay close to the water. Psalm chapter 1, I guess I already get there. It says, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by water, by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaves does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. And then in Jeremiah chapter 17,
but then I was all, you know, I was, I was a rough cuss, man. I mean, I, I, I went out drinking every weekend, you know, Friday. I mean, I, I looked forward to Friday because, and getting my check because I wanted to get it and see if I could get it spent by Sunday. You know, on as much beer and wine and rodeoing and just whatever, you know. But yet, I was supposed to be a Christian. I was supposed to be saved, you know. And, and, uh, I, I don't, you know, if I was, I sure was not living the fruit of it. Amen? Yeah. But anyway, in the uh, 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 early 80s there, I got, I got changed. I got turned on to the Word of God. And I, uh, I, got, I went into uh, Matthew and started reading in Matthew. And I got to know a Jesus that I had never heard about. You know, I, I'd always heard Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he and Jesus come by one day and said, Zacchaeus, you come down, I'm going home with you. And things like that, you know. I'd heard that about Jesus, but I never had heard about him laying hands on the sick and him getting well. I never had heard that we could still have that today, you know. And I began to preach, I began to read that in the, in, in the, uh, the four Gospels. And I said, you know, His Word says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's right. Well, if He's still the same today, yesterday, and forever, why are we going to believe that some of that stuff is passed away? See, that's something other we got to get planted on. It ain't passed away. That's right. Yes. If it was yesterday, it's still today. That's right. We need to be planted on that. We need to realize that what He had back then with the disciples. He ain't done away with. That's right. Amen. We need to realize that that tongues is still for today, just Amen. like it was Amen. back then. Amen. 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 We need to be planted on that. We need to be so planted on it that when people comes up and tells us it's of the devil, they can say, "You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know how much danger you're putting yourself in saying that something of God is of the devil." Come on. Amen. Be planted. Be planted. Yes. Right. Know who you are and whose you are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Be planted. Unmovable. Don't let somebody come along with some goofball, some kind of something other and sway you from believing Jesus Christ is the only way. Amen. Amen. And the things that He's had ain't for back then is not for today. Amen. Amen. And then the next thing is when the heat comes. When the heat comes, it's like persecution coming on us. The heat, have you heard, ever heard this expression, the heat just beating down on them plants out there? Yeah. The heat is beating down on the plant, trying to hinder that plant from producing. Yeah. When persecution comes on us, you think about this now, just think about it. When persecution comes on the church, when persecution comes on us, it's trying to hinder, you know, to, uh, uh, just like the woman up in Kentucky that the persecution about her taking the stand to not put her name on her, she began to uh, experience persecution. But in the end, she won out because she stood her ground. She yeah. was planted and she was unmovable. Yeah. And she held fast to her beliefs. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. But she suffered persecution. But look at, the, look at the witness that she has now because she stood. Yeah, probably. You see, the persecution beat down on her. The heat was beaten down. But she stood fast. She had her feet planted by the water. Yeah. And her, and she stayed first. Amen. Amen. She stayed true to her her call. Amen. When persecution comes, it's like beat the the heat beating down on that plant. It's trying to keep you from producing the fruit that God has you to produce. And that's why we need to stay close to the water. Yeah. Amen. Amen. See. The, the word said, the word said, uh, he will be like a tree 
planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream, it does not fear when heat comes. Yep. See, we don't need to fear about when the persecution come is going to come. That's right. Amen. That's right. We don't need to get any fear about that. If we've got our plant, if we've got our roots running towards the water, have you ever seen? Have, you know, you run, you drive down the river a lot of times, and you can see trees how they tend to have roots. Their roots go this way. It looks kind of one-sided there because you know normally a tree would spread all around, but whenever a tree is close to the river, its roots tend to want to run to that water. You'll see them. You'll, you know, when the erosion comes, you can see how the roots is all going over there. You can see, you can, you can actually see the curves in them. They start out and they go and they'll turn and go to the water because they're drawing that water. See, that water is the spirit of God. Yes. That we need to have, we need to have our roots going towards that spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Draw it off of that river of life. Amen. 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 And that way, when the heat comes, when the persecution comes. We don't have to fear it. That's right. We go through it. And we come out on the other side in a better way. Amen. Amen. Why? Amen. Because we have our roots planted on the water. Amen. The word says, the word says, it does not fear when heat comes. It doesn't fear. The heat's coming. The summer's coming on. It's going to be a dry, hot summer. You know, you go out in Arizona. We don't we don't see this much here, but you go out in them drier states. I've been out there, you know, and you're driving along in the desert, man. There ain't nothing. Everything is brown, and then all of a sudden, there's a stream running through here, and everything is green and flourishing right by that stream. There's water there. That, you know, I think they got a sign out there that says, "Where water flows, uh, uh, produce grows where water flows." I believe something like that. Mm -hmm. That's out in California, Arizona. So we need to we need to have ourselves so planted and stay right by the river, stay connected to the flow, stay connected to the water that is flowing. Amen. Amen. Its leaves are always green. You ever seen a plant in a hot, dry summer how the leaves get shriveled up and turn brown and even fall off? You know, I remember a few years back, it got so dry around here that the rabbits were running around with goggles on their eyes because the dust was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was dry. Yeah, amen. Uh, plants would get so dry, the leaves would shrivel up. And if you're not watering them every day, they'll just dry up and, and, and basically die, you know. But see, <clears throat> the plants will, the plants will dry up, and, and the leaves will get brown, and some of them will even fall off. We'll, we'll, we'll think about this when you're not, you know. A lot of people get saved, and they'll get they'll get they'll get they'll go going towards God for a little while, but they're not really plugging into that water. They're not, they're not planted right by that stream. They're not planting themselves right there by the river of life. They're venturing out. People want to venture out into the world. They want to get out here in the dry storms. Amen? Amen. And they get out there, and the first news you know, they're out in the desert. It's all dry. They have no water. They have no place to get water. They're drying up. Pretty soon what happens? They fall off. They was. They was put they, they was planted. They was going forward with God. But they hadn't tapped into the water. They didn't stay close to the water. 
you got to stay close to the water. That's the key, is staying close to the water. See, like a tree planted by the rivers of life. But see, that tree's planted there. See, we're a free will agent. We can move. We can go this way or that way. We can stay and be planted, or we can get up and move away from the water. God's given us that free will. But the Word says, Blessed is the man yep. that trusts in the Lord yep. that puts his confidence in Him. Blessed is the man who does not sit in the counsel of the unwise, of the wicked. He puts his delight in the, in, in the laws of the Lord. He puts his, his delight in Jesus. Amen. And on His Word, He meditates day and night. That man will be blessed. He will be like that tree that is planted by the water. He will be like that tree that is unmovable. Come on. You see? That's what's going to make you unmovable. You're planted there. You've, you've planted yourself there. You've made the decision. I'm putting it down right here. This is where Jesus is. I'm staying close to Jesus. But I want you to know it takes diligence to stay close to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because just like them trees, they have to put them roots, they have to run them roots out towards the water. See, you've always got to be going towards the water. There's other things that will be trying to move you away from it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I wrote this down. But it could be a hot, dry summer, and every day you water that plant and it will stay green. Why does it stay green? Because it's close to the water. It's getting water. It has a source of getting water. Do you have a source of getting water? We have a source. We have the Word of God. We have a and we have a Holy Ghost language that we can touch right into. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We can plug right into Him. We have that source. Amen? Amen. Amen. We can, we, it's just like if you go out there and take that water hose and water them tomatoes every day, they'll produce gobs of tomatoes. Amen? Amen. And then you've got <clears throat> You've got no worries. <clears throat> no worries in a drought. Drought means hard times. I mean, you think about a drought. I mean, man, you're thinking, oh goodness, it's going to be rough now. You know, I mean, a drought. When people hear drought, it's hard to grow plants. It's hard to grow food. It's hard to it's hard to water your animals. You know, you've got to worry about your animals not having water. Amen. So it means hard times. There's times when we go through drought spiritually. You know, we'll get into a time of drought where we feel like, man, we're just not we're not making a connection. Amen. But see, we don't have to worry about that if we've got ourselves planted by the stream of water. Amen. The drought comes. The time of drought comes, you know, and we're not getting we're not we're not getting the word like we used to. We're not we're not being preached to. We're not being wooed to. We're not you know uh, we're just not getting it like we used to. There's a, it's a drought season. But if you're planted by that water. You can go through that drought and you, you go through that time with no words. You go through a hard time. You go through, you know, it may be a hard time of, a, it may be a physical hard time. It may be a spiritual hard time. But you can go through it with no worries if you trust in the Lord. Yeah, yeah. See, you're trusting in the Lord. You're leaning not to your own understanding. In all your ways, you're acknowledging Him. Yeah. What does it say? He shall make your way to your path straight. Amen. 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 
No worries. No worries means it don't matter. Uh, no worries means it don't matter about the hard time. Because I have a source. I am close to the water. Jesus is the water. Amen? Amen. Stay close to the water, folks. Never fails to bear fruit. That's the key right there. Plants that are in a dry, hot place and have no source of water don't bear fruit. And if, they, if it does bear fruit, it's a little fruit and it's not worth eating. I mean, have you ever seen plants... You know that that uh, they just they out there and they're all dried up, and shriveled up, and they may produce a little bit of fruit, but it's it's you go out there and look at it like you know you, you farmers. I've seen farmers, you know, when they had a hot, dry season and and the beans didn't grow maybe that high, and it just you know they're not worth even going out there and spending the time cutting them because they just didn't produce. They produced a little bit, but it's not worth the effort to even try to get them. But see, I'm talking about spiritual fruit. I'm talking about the fruit that we should be bearing. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You see, if we're going through, if we're going in a, if we have our, if we've been planted in the water, if we stay close to the water, we're going to bear fruit and we're going to bear good fruit. Mm -hmm. But you think about people that, you know, they kind of want to have one leg out here and one leg over here, you know, come to church every other week or, you know, or, or, or well, they open their Bible up once a month and some of them even don't even do that, you know. Some of them come three or four times a year and they think that they're going to bear much fruit. Come on. You're not going to bear fruit like that. The Word says, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, that puts his confidence in Him. He's like the tree planted by the water. He's like the tomato plant that gets water every day and produces fruit. Tomatoes this big around and still little knots like that that ain't even worth throwing to the rabbits. Yeah. Are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. You see, some people bear a little fruit. Some people will bear just a little fruit, but it ain't even worth even pay, paying attention to. Think about it. I, I know, you know, you, you, you probably can think about people that's like that. They got a little bit of fruit. You know, out of 10,000 words they say, there's 10 of them that's worth a flip. Yeah. You hear it? But see, that man that's planted in Jesus, he's got his, he's got his roots drawing out of that river. Drawing out, drawing out. There's going to be fruit coming out. He's going to produce tomatoes. He's going to produce cucumbers. He's going to produce corn. He's going to produce good fruit. Why? Because he's planted by the river of life. He's planted in that stream. He's planted in Jesus. And he's drawing it out. He's drawing that water out. Amen. <clears throat> I want to read uh, another scripture. Let me just finish reading what I, I wrote down here. But when it but when it has a source of water, it bear much fruit and good fruit. We should bear fruit, and our fruit should be good. If we are planted close to the water, and the water that is Jesus. Let me. I want to read uh, Psalms 92, verses 12 through 15 in closing. I think we're going to make it kind of where you can get out of here and make it. Psalms 92, verses 12 through 15. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish in the courts of our God. They will stand, they will, they will still bear fruit in old age. 
they will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. Amen. Trusting in the Lord, you will flourish. You will be fresh and green. Mm -hmm. You will bear fruit for a long time. Amen. Amen. And your fruit will be good. Just picture a tree that gets water every day. A tomato plant that gets water every day. When it begins to bear fruit, it's going to bear, and it's always going to be a fruity plant. You know, it's it's always flourishing. That plant gets watered and gets cared for and tended to. Its leaves never wither. You know, I'm thinking about I'm thinking about uh, some plants that we've had. Katie's a lot better with plants now than she used to be. I used to tell Katie, you need plants that live in the desert. You don't need plants that live in water. <laughs> They, sur they survive because you water them. Yeah, I would. I would see them. You know, I see them water. I mean, they, and I, I said, man, these plants gotta have water, and I water them. The next day, whatever. You know, but she's she's a lot better with them now. You know, she, she watered them again too. And that's what I'm getting at is when when a plant gets watered every day. You know, or, or as often it ain't need water. Some plants you can't water it. But, you know, but just just for instance, let's just take for every day for the plants that need water every day. You know, and, and they'll stay green and flourishing. You know, I mean the reason that I'm saying every day because we need the Word of God. You know, it's every day. Every day. We need to we need to spend time with Jesus every day. Yeah. We need to spend time in prayer, praying in the Spirit every day. We need to time, spend time seeking Him, searching out for Him, seeking His Word, wanting more of Him every day. And as we do, we will flourish, we will be fresh and green and bear much fruit. Amen? Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet. <laughs>